Hello and welcome to our episode number 10 of Photoshop and Lightroom Tips. I really apologize for the big delay in doing the um, episodes because I've been really busy uh, even in Ramadan and the past uh, days. Um, if you recall uh, in, in episode number 9, um, we've been talking about how to use the blending sliders to remove a boring sky and replace it with something totally different. In today's episode number 10, I will be talking about uh, how to remove halos from your images. I'll give you an example of an image which has a halo, which I prepared it for you guys, is as such an image, which you can see in this area, between the dunes and the sky, there is a halo. Now, the technique which I'm going to show you, I learned it from a person called Ben Wilmer. Uh, this guy is really amazing in how he teaches uh, uh, all the tricks about uh, Photoshop. And I would like to share it with you guys today. And uh, the way we're going to start is that I'm just going to make you understand the technique behind it. Is that uh, the first thing we're going to isolate the dunes from the sky because I have to do some painting. And if I paint, I need to be sure that I'm not going to overpaint uh, on the dunes. I need the paint to come only on the sky. And what also I will require to do is that I need to match the color between this area and the area which is having the halo. And uh, to do so, first thing, let me activate the uh, keystrokes. So you guys will be able to see exactly what I'm doing, which I hope it will work now. Then, okay, keystrokes, keystrokes, yes, okay, done. Now, uh, the first thing I need to do is I need to get a reading exactly what colors are available in this area. To do that, it's as simple as going to, first thing I need to have my, um, have my info panel enabled so you have to go to windows and then you uh, you you choose the info panel okay i'm just gonna take that info panel and let it stick somewhere here because i will be using it and i will be using the eye dropper which is this one okay now in the eyedropper, you make sure that you are not using a point sample. As point sample, what it does, it uh, it will exactly make your um, uh, you know uh, selection that you will you will choose from the image is extremely precise to a pixel, which it's it's very accurate, and we don't require it in our image because sometimes there are some noise or there are some other color which you don't really require to pick up. So in most of the cases, if you have a good resolution uh, of an image, you will choose 5x5. Five five, and if you have a lower, you will choose 3x3. Three three, and those are the two main uh, selections that you will use. We not go for the bigger ones. So in that kind of image, I will choose 5x5. Five five, and I will try to uh, do my selection uh, somewhere when that halo finishes, just to be sure that I'm taking the right point. Now for me to be able to uh, have a selection and this selection will be uh, you know pointing here and I can take these readings is I will press shift and then I will click on the area that I want to uh, take its reading. So once I click now I've added a uh, selection which will show me in here exactly what are the colors available in this position so i have the red 129 green 132 and the blue 134 now these readings i need to match it with the halo so once it is matched and i paint with this color the halo will disappear let's try that okay to do that all i have to do is go to the adjustments and I will choose curves. Now in curves, as you can see, I have to expand this to see something which is very important, which is the input and output. Now, what I need to do is I need to choose 
the area which is having the halo okay and I need to get the reading of this now to do that I have to take the hand tool which is inside the curve I will click on it and then I will have an eyedropper from this eyedropper I will have to be very accurate to choose the brightest area in the in the halo which is appearing in this area as you can see uh, just have a look once I'll have the eyedropper on any place in the image it will show me as a circle where is it exactly in the histogram so as you can see now I will have the selection somewhere here because this is the brightest area in the uh, halo so for me to take the reading of this uh, area while I'm in the curve uh, I will have to press shift command or control in Windows and then I will click now if you look at the curves you can see nothing has happened but exactly yes something has happened where in a different location uh, when I see the red I will see that Photoshop has added a point in this area okay uh, where you can see it here in this area and if I go to the green I will see exactly the same also uh, thing Photoshop has done where he ha I mean it added a point in the histogram and plus finally the blue is exactly the same thing now as you can see here we have some readings the input and output now what I need to do is to match whatever was been taken in this point which is that point okay in this point I need to match it with the input uh, when the, uh, sorry in the output of the colors of which I've taken in the halo so I'll go to the red now and I can see the red in this case it is 165 what was it on that uh, you know proper uh, color is 129 so I will change the output to 129 okay so that's the red and then the green is 132 so I will go to green and I will change it to 132 okay don't be scared from the colors don't worry 132 and then I will go to the blue which is 134 134 and I will put here 134 okay now if you look at the image you say what the heck is this guy doing it's the same and it just became darker again as I said don't worry now all you have to do since I have a mask I have to uh, invert this mask to be black so I will not have this effect on the whole image so to do that you have to be sure that your selection is on the mask and then you press command or control I in this way you will have your uh, mask uh, totally black okay all right so after converting or inverting the uh, the mask uh, all you have to do now is to paint for this setting which we have done in the curves we have to paint it in the halo now as we said to be sure that uh, we have uh, I mean to be sure that we are not touching the uh, dunes uh, all we have to do is we need to do some selection so I will be selecting the dunes okay and in such case the dunes are selected and the sky is not but I need the reverse of this because I want to paint on the sky and I don't want to paint on the dunes so all I have to do is press shift command and I this will invert my selection now if I paint here I will choose the uh, brush by pressing B and I will increase the size of my brush and now I need to be sure that my uh, or this the, the the hardness of my um, brush is totally zero the hardness has to be zero and there is a way to do that I mean either you can go to uh, this panel and you can uh, increase or decrease your hardness but I don't like to use that because you will not be able to view how the look of your brush 
Now, for example, if I, if I press the command Alt together and then I click, now see what I have on my uh, brush. If I go all the way up, the hardness will be zero. If I go all the way down, I will change the hardness to 100 gradually. So I need my hardness to be all the way to zero. And if I drag to the, by the way, just to understand, I'm pressing now the command, uh, sorry, the uh, Alt and Control uh, together. I did not remove my hand. And after clicking on the mouse, I also did not remove my finger. Now, if I scroll to the right or left, what will happen? The size of the uh, brush will change. So I will take a fair uh, size of a brush. And now, what, how you need to paint is that try your level best to not go all the way to the sky. Just stay at the line because I want a very fraction of this uh, you know, uh, of this uh, curve or the effect of this curve to be painted on the halo. So let's try that now. If I start painting, and by the way, if I want to paint on the, uh, on the mask, I have to be painting with white. So right now my foreground and background are black, which is wrong. If I press D, this will take it to the default and I will have my foreground as white. And now, I can start painting. Now I can just do it very slowly. I don't need to make a very sudden change. So I'm just, I have my finger clicked on the mouse and I'm moving very slowly on the line or even below the line because I don't want a very big change to happen. If I keep on going like that, okay, I'm almost having my halo disappearing. So let's see, and I can still see some here. In some cases, I will require to go above the line just to have more effect. Or you can use, you know, you decrease your opacity or decrease your flow and then start painting just to make it a very, you know, uh, small effect. And now let's see what really happened. By the way, I have the selection. If I want to uh, hide this selection, I'll press the command or control H. Now, if you have done this for the first time, Photoshop will ask you, do you want to have uh, this uh, option to be uh, given for the, uh, to, I mean, to hide the extras of the Photoshop or you want to hide Photoshop? What you will do, if you click on hide Photoshop, when you press command and H, it will hide the whole program. I don't want it to, to do that. I want it to hide only the selection or whatever you know, extras I'm doing. So I click on this and now the selection is there. Okay, but uh, I don't see it right now. Let's have a look of the changes. Now this is before and this is after. Still there are some areas which I have to, uh, you know, still go through. In that case, I would like to go to a lower opacity, uh, let's say uh, around 10. And now I will start, you know, slowly going through that halo to each and every time I go or, or struck on the uh, on the halo, I will have uh, a, a more effect on it because I don't want it to become very dark or change really totally. I'm just trying to reach to that halo only. So every time I will click on that and paint, that will add a small portion of that effect. And I will keep on going like that until I feel that the halo is almost being gone. Let's see what we have done. This is before and this is after. Okay, so as you can see, in such case, you will reduce the halo from your image. And by the way, there are some cases where you have to, I mean, the color which you have taken can be fine for a part of the image and it can, can, can be totally different in a different part. Now, as I can see from this image, that in this area it's it's having uh, more darker than the left area. The left area is, is going more towards the uh, blue. Okay, so uh, you can just spend some time, uh, you know, uh, uh, painting on the halo just to make sure that it's totally disappeared from your image. Okay, and uh, uh, if you also, by the way, uh, you find that you have painted more in in uh, in some places all you have to do is you can press the x key 
uh, to change your uh, you know to change your foreground to black if I press the X now I will get the black and I can uh, just choose a, a bigger brush and then I can just paint somewhere where I feel in this area it became it became a little bit darker so I can clean it it just takes time some somehow in some cases it will be faster but if we look at the what we started with and what we have ended there are little little parts of the halos some here which we can you know gradually uh, remove them but as I said this is the before and this is after thank you for watching and just a reminder uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, to give me a like if you would like to help me uh, keep on going and giving you these uh, tips I hope you liked it and have a nice day